more, more consistent. And uh, I also do believe that the principle should be that those who actually benefit from validation should share the costs. And we, we do know that, that there are plenty of beneficiaries. I mean, the state as a whole benefits from this. Education providers probably, most probably, benefit from this. The individual benefit from this. Employers benefit from this. So I think we also need to start working on the principle that, that all of these stakeholders should actually contribute to funding. Yes, um, I agree that um, if you look at the, the situation which, situations in which PPL is used, it, there's a lot of differentiation and also the, the question of who's to pay, uh, how should it be funded, um, has a differentiated answer. But I, and I haven't really thought this through, but it's quite interesting being from the government to say this, but uh, I do think that uh, if you really uh, are consistent in using a learning outcomes approach, and um, it should not matter um, where the credits in, in educational system or in educational programs are uh, given uh, to. Um, if credits are given based on informal or non-formal learning, the, the educational institute should get money for it just as much as uh, for, for their formal learning. So that, that way they could pay for the, the, the validation procedure. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> I would like to thank the, the panel uh, for uh, a very good insight into, into, uh, into different issues which were addressed uh, by the conference. I think it's also very good uh, because they also represent not, uh, in a way, uh, people who are working in this VPL, but also uh, within their organization, they are responsible for this area. And I think that uh, uh, it is also a kind of signal or a message from us, from the audience, to them, uh, to their organization. I think that some of the issues we, uh, that we address today <coughs> will probably be the issues for the next Biennale in two years. I think that uh, Biennale is every two years, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, I would just like uh, I would just like to come back to uh, I was moderating yesterday a very nice uh, workshop. Uh, it was about uh, 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 a school which was offering education to people to individuals at risk. Uh, so uh, a very interesting uh, experience. And, uh, and one of the things uh, which was said uh, at that workshop, uh, their motto is you do the best, we do the rest. <laughs> I think that you all did the best here in this conference and I would like to thank you, but also I know that Ruth does most of the rest. So I think that he really deserves a applause for you. Okay, well, thank you for that. But First of all, to give some concluding remarks, to close the first PPL BNL, the first global BPL BNL, um, I think it's proper to say thank you to you, because the BNL is not by me or for me or of me, it's, it's by all of us. So thank you for participating, for contributing, for having made this BNL a success in terms of, well, what the purpose was, a knowledge exchange, exchange of experiences, exchange of opinions, exchange of sharing knowledges, uh, fighting obstructions, etc., etc. It's about exchange of knowledge, and that's done by all of us. So that's a thank you to all of us is in place. Uh, of course, a special thank you to all the speakers keynotes, the speakers in the workshops, the master classes, lectures, roundtables, posters. Uh, a thank you to the European Commission for having these 10 partners work for three years together and have a lot of ex exciting experiences uh, inside the knowledge-based, competence-based meetings, but also around it informally in the different places where we've been and where we've been working together 
and at a distance. Uh, thank you for the inspiration from UNESCO, from ETF, from CEDEFOP, from the Commission with all their activities. Uh, thank you from, for the inspiration from Canada, from Korea. Uh, thank you again to the partners in this project. You know, you see the logos in the orange in below. So thank you to all the partners. Thank you to in Holland, I should say. <laughs> you know, the students helping us, the board allowing us, you know, to use this facility and supporting this project for that long. Uh, thank you to the <coughs> caterers, the technical people, and to the office that helped us uh, give the connections with, you know, the local city, etc. Thank you to the Dutch Ministry also for participating in this way, for opening this BNL and, well, actually also closing it as the final speaker <laughs> in the panel, so thank you for that. Um, I think it's crucial to know that if we say this is the first BNL, to make it a proper BNL, we need a second one. <laughs> because otherwise it, this has never been a BNL, but just a conference. <laughs> So, uh, that's, that's one crucial question still to be asked, but how to make it at least sustainable enough to have already a platform for the second BNL is that we will try, and not try, we will surely make this website a platform in which we will link in all the participants, in which we will uh, update the information on this website, you know, with the contributions that are now done, but also next uh, developments, publications, you know, practice descriptions, instruments, calls for participation in professionalization, whatever, you know. So let's make it, well, a sort of uh, Facebook, but then a VPL book, or VNIL book, whatever, a PLAR book. You know, you name it as you want it, as long as it's about validation. Validation for all and validation for yourself. Um, so the website will be maintained, it will be updated and uploaded with a lot of new information, but contribute yourself too, because sustainability is not something that is done properly by top-down management, it's bottom-up, and that's about us. Um, and the final one I would like to thank is the one that without him, this would never have happened anyway. It's not about me, it's about Eric. He's sitting behind the camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think without him, uh, this would really never would have, been, would have, would have happened. Um, but I'll speak to you later. <laughs> <laughs> Because a lot of work still needs to be done, of course. <laughs> uh, no, so uh, on the BNL itself, I think to conclude, I think what is, and Christine told me yesterday, and I think it's true, this has been a conference or a BNL uh, which was an open exchange of knowledge in which we also listened a lot to each other instead of a conference which we all know where you come there to say your thing, to score the credits as a with a publication or an article and you hop off again. This has been an open exchange of knowledge, experiences, competences, and I hope that this might truly be, uh, become a platform for maintaining communication on the value of validation of prior learning. Um, a lot of things have also been you know, pointed out, the topics, the next or the topics for the agenda are quite clear and a, a lot of things I probably forget but I think it's crucial we need more research on evidences on practices so on the bottom-up processes especially we don't need so much more policy we need updated policy policy adapting to the practical questions that are happening I think that's crucial we need to focus on the usability of the instruments it's already been mentioned uh, it should be simple, it should be uh, highly accessible, and after that, the next step, access to any kind of system, a learning or a working system, should also be, of course, highly accessible. 
it should have a focus on integration in terms of, well, let's have the holistic features of validation be integrated into the learning culture, or maybe even better, the learning and working culture in society. Because we all know we are in a paradigm shift from the knowledge-based society to the competence-based society, which we can call in UNESCO terms the learning society. We need to focus on stakeholdership. Validation is part of lifelong learning and is an essential part, I think, and we all think that probably, and it's about shared responsibilities, least of all uh, by the learner themselves. They also have responsibility, of course, so that's about us too, but it's also about other stakeholders in their position as employer or the trade unions or the government or, well, schools, universities. Big challenges are mentioned. The shift in the learning culture is the biggest one because that's something that is happening anyway. So let's make use of the shift that's happening, the transitions that are already occurring in different speeds, in different phases, in different countries and regions. Raising awareness is essential. I think uh, everybody spoke about it. If we really want to put the learner in the center make them also, the learners, responsible for their role in the process. Make them owner, co-owner, co-designer of their lifelong learning. That takes a lot of investment in raising awareness. And let's hope that this platform can contribute a lot. We have to, through the platform, of course, maintain the knowledge exchange. That's crucial because, you know, Everywhere we are all facing same kinds of problems, obstacles. We have all we have successes. So if we share them, we can learn a lot from each other. So we don't need to benchmark. We need the bench learning. I think that's crucial. Professionalization of people working in VPL is also mentioned a lot, and I think that's crucial. Um, also, again, always in within the context of your own nation, national learning culture. Empowering the individual might be the word to say how 